okay I look crazy I know but I am starting to feel stressed about the mess in the studio still I can't finish um, I still need to put some storage over here and uh, all on that wall see the bulkhead that's okay I don't, actually don't mind so much about the ceiling but like I can't finish in here and it's starting to really make me feel super stressed <laughs> that's nobody's fault but things are just very busy right now and I thought in order to just like have fun and relax and because Dion asked about this I'm gonna make some roll eggs on this drum carter and they're gonna be some like fall inspired color so I've got gold this is like a dark dark burgundy it's coming across maybe a little russet I actually do have a, what I would consider to be a russet then there, here's a charcoal then I pulled out some of this really dark peacock blue. I don't know how it's gonna come across because of the window. And I'll probably add in some cool add-ins. Oh, I also, wait a minute, there's one more thing. Um, I also grabbed some of this brick silk. I think this is Tussa out of the shop. And I've been trying to dye for the perfect like copper color and screwing it up, but I have all these samples. So I'm gonna throw some of these in too. So this is the pile right now. Here's one of my tubs of like carding mill and stuff. So I'm gonna look for a couple more colors and then we're gonna make some roll eggs. And then we're gonna pull them all off the drum carter and hopefully it'll make me feel less stressed. Okay, let's go. I did pull out a little bit of this like olive brown green color. Some of this green, a little bit of this green as well which is another green silk okay and so these are my like sparkly add-ins i think i'm gonna pick one of these Ooh, that might not be bad but we'll put it out and then we'll see if i use it or not <clears throat> okay hang on under here yes okay there's some green in here i'm gonna grab this this is perfect I'm gonna grab this and I'm also gonna grab the orange and I've got a little bit of the gold already these are all my color choices I'll do my best to not get in the way of this camera. So the first thing with the Brother Carter is that you take out ugh, the little peg thingy that holds the drum to the axle and then set that aside so you can spin the drum freely. I have no idea how much this is gonna be. I probably could have gone a lot further. I bet I only have like two ounces on here, but it's okay. Okay, um, so it's easy. And it's really not different from a blending board. Some people think it is, I do not. The difference is how much you draft and pull 
while you have it on your stick. So like you can see, first of all, wait, I like to try to get as much of my colors as I can off the drum when I'm removing. So sometimes I go slower, but so you're going to just go up, roll this down. I am not rolling it tightly at all and I'm not drafting while it's still embedded in the like, I don't know if you call these teeth, the wires, whatever you want to call them. So, and then I'm just going to pull it off from the part that's still in the teeth. If it's not um, wound, rolled like you want, do not do this tightly. Again, just I'm laying those ends, those fluffy ends, see them? against the wires and then I'm going to wind it down but you do not have to draft when you do that. I'm going to show you how easily this comes out. Look, that comes right out. I've heard so many kooky <laughs> ideas about this that make me laugh but it's really easy to do. All right, so that's the roll egg that I pulled off. Okay, and it's super fluffy and squishy. If you make them tight, it isn't wrong, but they're uh, they're different to draft. But again, that might be what you want. So it isn't wrong that way, but they do come off really fluffy if you don't pull against those teeth. So I'll show you. Let me do one that's tight. That'd probably be a good way to show the difference. Okay, so I just want to lift the ends just enough. Okay, so if you do it this way, where see how it's all of this is still in the teeth. If you do it this way, oh Lord, first you gotta grab it all the way. Okay, so you grab it between your dowels. If you do this and draft against those teeth, it's going to be really tight. See, now I'm drafting against the teeth. First of all, you don't need to do that. But if you do, see how tight it got on my, my dowels? See that? So if you draft against it like that, it's going to get really, really tight. Which is, again, not wrong. Especially if you have a shorter fiber. You might actually want that because it'll help it hold together. Okay, see how much tighter that is? I'm gonna go one more turn, but I'm pulling against the teeth instead. I'm gonna go one more and we'll just pull it off. Okay, so also, see as it's coming apart, you can see it coming apart right in here. You can see right through. You actually just wanna pull it against those teeth if you want it tight and then roll it like that again so that you never let it get all fluffy and floofy. But see the difference? Look at this. See how tight this is on the dowels? But even now, even though this is really tight, it isn't that hard to pull a dowel out. But much harder than it was last time. Okay, so I'm gonna roll it up and I'll show you the two next to each other. That's really showing you the, the difference between rolling them up with some drafting against those teeth and rolling them up just completely loosely like I did. I really usually like them better like this unless the fiber is very short and then I might want them like this. It's just really personal preference however you like them to be and a lot of people pull them off really tightly like this one because they are actually I don't know kind of prettier to photograph but they're not necessarily easier to spin. It kind of depends more on your fiber and your preference for spinning. So I've heard some conversation. This is the roll egg that I pulled off the drum carter. I've heard some conversation about what's different about doing it on the blending board. Um, you cannot fit as much fiber on the blending board as you can on like the big drum carter that I used for this. That's one thing. But also I heard some scuttlebutt about people thinking that there is more of a difference. So I'm gonna make some with basically the same fibers and also like what's the reason? So there's a couple reasons. For one thing, you get more air in your fiber because it's gonna come off in a spiral when you draft it. 
but also I like it because you can do a self striping yarn with this if you put stripes in your roll egg as you spin it off the end of it you will get like a stripe it'll still blend some but you also get a stripe Um, if you don't want them tight, I do the same thing as I do on the drum carter. I will pull up and draft this way, okay? But while I'm rolling, there's very little uh, tension, let's say, on, on my dowels. So now again, I'll pull up a, probably another 25%. I'm going to grip these dowels really well and draft a bit, but then when I actually go to roll it up, I'm going to loosen it and go like this and roll it up loosely. I personally like that better. You should just kind of practice and see how you like it. Some people really like it tight, drafted really, or um, drafted and then rolled really tightly on their dowels. I just don't like drafting it as much that way when I'm spinning. Okay, I'm drafting, but then I'm letting that pressure up while I'm rolling it on my dowel. Okay, so then I will just a little, put a little bit of pressure on the end to keep it intact. Oh, look at I pulled that up. I love it. But this is actually what I would call a roll log. So it's the entire blending board. And it'll self stripe as I spin, which is actually really, really cool. So I'm gonna pull this off and turn it into the little swirl that you see. But it's not tight on here. I mean, you can see it is just not tight. I can actually just like squish it and spin it. Gosh, that one's pretty too. I can't wait to spin these. <laughs> so there you go. You can spin and you will get a self-striping yarn as you go through the bat because you end up getting this little mini bat you made like stripe through the stripes side by side because now you're gonna take these stripes that you put down this way, you rolled them so they're like this, and now you're basically gonna spin off the end of this little mini bat. So you can draft this through a um, diz if you want to. I mean, if it's a bigger one, I will, but when I actually go to spin it, I will pre-draft a bit like this. That just helps me see if there's any like thick or kind of like sticky spots in it as I'm going. I'll just pre-draft through the whole thing a little. And then when I actually go to spin it, I'll draft again right at the wheel but this just really helps me make sure it isn't too tight. And if there are any spots that are too tight, this is your opportunity to kind of like loosen them up so that when you're at your wheel, drafting is much easier. Or if you want to spin it long draw, it's all nice and loose and um, drafting long draw is much easier if you've loosened it up first. So you can kind of see, I'm going to swirl this again so you can kind of see what the self-striping yarn is going to look like. 
it'll be blended but it's still going to stripe and that is really really fun and cool. Okay, so let me come in close. So now you will be able to see that like when I start here, I'll get a stripe that has this really dark burgundy and kind of blends and then goes into this like blue, then some of this uh, like avocado green into the golden blue. And it's just gonna change as you go around through the Rolex. So here's a like really russet spot. Here's a russet and gold. So this kind of gives you an idea of how your yarn is going to stripe as you go through. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you soon. Next week is going to be weaving. Thanks. I love you. Bye. If you use the same colors, even if they aren't identical in stripes, it really doesn't matter. So you can see if I did spin this and then I chose to go ahead and spin this because I used all the same colors, even though the proportions are different, even though whatever, whatever, you would not know it and you would think it was just all one long hand spun. So you don't have to worry too much about making them perfectly identical. Thanks for joining me for this. It is so much fun and I really can't wait to spin these. They're so fall and even though it isn't even August yet, I mean, you're always thinking ahead when you're in this business and I'm sort of starting to think about fall colors. So thanks you guys for joining me. Next week we'll be weaving and I'll see you Sunday for the live uh, craft along at two o'clock my time. We'd love to have you come and join us. It's here on YouTube, it's live. If you subscribe, you'll get a notification. I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.